Hey guys, Sean here from Tesla Family. Welcome or welcome back to our channel for anyone who is new or returning back to watch our videos. We really appreciate your time jumping on to take a look at our content. I added Tesla Solar here to my home in late June 2020. And so far, I've really been loving the panels here. It's now fall 2020. I want to share with you my seasonal production data for my Tesla solar panels. So thanks for joining me here for the first in my series of seasonal Tesla solar production videos. This video here is going to be for summer 2020 covering July through September production. And I'm going to be producing three more videos each season, one for fall, winter, and then spring here as we move through the seasons of the next year. I'm going to be sharing information with you in this video on my solar production, my home usage, some rainfall and sky cover data that could impact production, S-break creation, and my utility bill cost for each month. All right, so let's jump into the data. Okay guys, here is the first month of my summer 2020 Tesla solar production breakdown July 2020 again I have a 7.5 kilowatt system that was installed back in late June 2020 been very happy with the system so far so here is the July 2020 breakdown I did post on my YouTube channel already the daily breakdown for July of 2020 so this video is going to cover monthly breakdowns if you haven't seen the daily production for July 2020, check that video out here at the link above. Otherwise, here we go with the monthly stats. So for July 2020, my system produced 1,033 kilowatt hours. My home usage here was 841 kilowatt hours. I drew from the grid 441 kilowatt hours, mainly at nighttime and then during the daytime hours when I was drawing more than I was producing. Mainly that would be for cloudy days or days when I was charging my Model 3. And then I ended up pushing 633 kilowatt hours to the grid. Take a look here on the left and you'll see all of that data. You can actually view all of the data on the Tesla app which is one of the really nice features about having Tesla Solar. I love being able to view all of the data through the app. You can see in my Power On video uh, introduction to the Tesla app and more of the features, but I'm just showing you a screen grab here of the July 2020 tab where we show monthly solar energy produced, home usage and grid usage, both pushing and pulling from the grid. And you can see those traces here in a monthly view. And that's how I get the data. And again, this uh, this data is all collected through a power blaster that was added to my electrical panel during the solar panel installation. This little power blaster here, you can see an image of what it looks like, has two little clips on it. And these clips attach to the main power feeds that are coming into my panel. And what they're able to do is measure power going in both directions because I do have net metering. So I also wanted to show here the high-end production that was possible. If every single day was full sunshine here in July 2020 at my location here in Maryland, Central Maryland, I would have been able to produce with my 7.56 kilowatt system about 1,500 and 34 kilowatt hours. But as you might imagine, it's not that easy to have every single day full sunshine for an entire month, especially here in Maryland. We're close to the ocean and the Chesapeake Bay. Um, so I wasn't able to reach that number. Um, this number is calculated by using the kilowatt hour rule of thumb. And I shared that information in that July 2020 overview. So check that out if you haven't already seen information on the kilowatt hour rule of thumb. What I did is I took the daily rule of thumb numbers and multiplied by the number of days in the month to get the high number and the low number because you get a range when you calculate your rule of thumb. The low end production possibility, this is really dependent on shading. So every day would still be sunny, but maybe you have more shading or different position of your panels um, is 1,096 kilowatt hours. And you can see that I was actually below this low end production possibility here for the month, uh, 1,033 only. I just missed it by about 60 kilowatt hours. And from what I can gather here, the main reason for that was we did have a pretty wet month in a fair amount of cloudiness uh, 
take a look at the 2020 daily video to see sort of the breakdown of the cloudiness for each day. But a fairly cloudy month and a lot of rainfall here. And I have the weather down below. You can see we hit 130% of normal for rainfall for the month. And we had about 55% sky cover for the month. It's probably a little bit higher than what we normally would see here. Sun angle may play a factor as well with the sun being directly overhead in July. The sun's rays are not hitting the panels perpendicularly, so that could be a reason why we're not producing closer to the maximum of production. Despite seeing nearly the maximum amount of daylight hours that we see all year. Uh, I did end up skipping over uh, real quick, but I want to touch on it. 36 was my average production per day, 36 kilowatt hours. And my highest production day was on July 14th, where I produced around 45 kilowatt hours. And that lowest production day where I produced only 13 kilowatt hours was on July 31st, the last day of the month. And that day featured some showers and was cloudy all day long with some fog around in the morning. Total lifetime production obviously is going to be the same production for, for the month because we were on month one. But I'm going to be adding that up as we move through the months here in the next couple of slides. And... The next couple of videos. I was able to produce one SREC and I was able to sell that SREC for $70.50 back in my pocket. Take a look at my SREC videos to learn more about SRECs and how you can create those SRECs using your solar system and how you can sell them in certain parts of the country. And my utility bill here when I was still on the time of use plan with my solar panels was an incredibly low $9.93. I do have a video on that as well. Take a look at that video here. Uh, at the link above to see the breakdown of my first bill but on the time of use plan my solar was broken down into peak off peak and intermediate peak periods we did end up making a change in the following month which i'll kick over to now august of 2020 so looking here at the bottom we made that switch from the time of use plan to the residential plan mainly because we wanted our solar credits that we get you know all the excess that we produce and push back into the grid we wanted those to be added up in based on any time of the day rather than being put into these compartments of peak, intermediate peak, and off peak. Take a look at the bottom here. My bill lowered to a whole dollar ninety-three in electrical charges. For the month of August, 901 kilowatt hours produced. My home usage here, 840 kilowatt hours. So I was able to generate more than what my home used, which is great. It's always nice to build up a credit and, and produce more than you need so that you can have that credit rolling into the later months of the year where our production will be much lower. From the grid, I pulled 540 kilowatt hours, and I pushed to the grid 601 kilowatt hours. High-end production possibility here in August would have been 1,172 kilowatt hours with low-end production of 703, and I did 901, so I feel much more comfortable getting that number square in the middle here of the high and low possibilities. Had we had more sunshine, I possibly would have been able to get closer to that high-end production possibility. Average production per day in kilowatt hours was 29 kilowatt hours. Highest production day was on the 9th, where I produced 39 kilowatt hours. So you can see for August, we're already kind of coming off of that peak of, of the bell curve of the production year. Even though it's very hot in August still, we're starting to lose some sun angle already and not able to produce as much uh, even on very sunny days. But still 39 is still quite respectable. The lowest production day was on the 26th. Only 9 kilowatt hours produced. Uh, showers, cloudy all day, and fog in the morning. Average percent of normal for rainfall. Very rainy month here in August over almost 300% of normal. Incredibly rainy month. We did have a few remnant tropical systems move over us in Maryland that brought all of that rainfall. The average sky cover for the month was 67%, and my total lifetime production now up to 1,934 kilowatt hours. Did not produce another SREC here for August because you can only create an SREC every time you produce a megawatt hour. So we're just shy of two megawatt hours here, lifetime production. And I previously covered the utility bill. All right, moving on to September 2020 here, 784 kilowatt hours produced, uh, home usage 685, so glad that I can still produce more than I need for my home, and I pulled 494 kilowatt hours from the grid, pushed 593 kilowatt hours to the grid, so you can see if you do the math there that I'm um, building a credit as we go into winter. High-end production here in September would have been 1,134 kilowatt hours, low end production 680 kilowatt hours, and I'm again sort of near the middle. Average production per day 26 kilowatt hours, highest production day in September 2020 
was on the 19th that produced 43 kilowatt hours which was higher than any day of production in the month of August. So happy to see that. And lowest production day was on the 26th, where we only produced 9 kilowatt hours. Some showers around, cloudy all day, and again, morning fog. The average percent of normal rainfall for the month was right around normal, just a little bit above at 106%, and 61% average sky cover for the month. Total lifetime production now up to 2,718 kilowatt hours for July through September 2020. That helped me create another SREC, and I was able to sell that for another $70.50 back in my pocket. Now here is the first full month where we switched back to a residential plan, and you can see our bill. We didn't have to pay anything for the month of September, our first free month of electricity, and we actually earned a credit of $7.50, so that was excellent news there too. All right, that summarizes our summer 2020 Tesla solar production breakdown. I'll be producing a fall 2020 Tesla solar breakdown here with the months of October, November, December that will be published sometime in January. And if you really found this video interesting, then look for the winter and spring production breakdowns as we move into 2021. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Tesla Family Channel here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos as well. Also, follow us on Twitter at Tesla Family Chan. Use my referral code to buy a new Tesla and you will get 1,000 free supercharging miles. Or if you use my referral code to buy Tesla solar roof or solar panels, you'll get a $100 reward after system activation.